Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. <laughs> Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike and today we're looking at an ink. We're looking at this ink. This is Monteverde's uh, Sapphire from the Gemstone Collection. This is a big old 90 mil bottle. It says it has ITF technology. I don't really know what that means, but if it means that your ink works really well, then... Go for it. Um, the bottle that comes in here, it looks like this. This is the big bottle from Monteverde. You may have seen the smaller ones, like this one. Uh, these are little 30 mils, three times as much ink. Uh, and you can find these online in various places for, um, usually these go for like um, eight or nine bucks. And these will go for, um, I don't know, the highest I've seen is like 15. So not very expensive for a whole lot of ink. Um, and you can often find this stuff on sale as well. Um, I bought this from Pen Chalet a while ago, uh, but you can also find it at uh, all your other favorite ink purveyors like Anderson Pens, etc., etc. Jet Pens has them, um, all sorts of places. So check out this Monteverde ink. Uh, I've got a few of these coming up in the next, um, I don't know, next several reviews, I suppose. Uh, but uh, I think this is a brand that gets overlooked and it ought not to be because it's darn good. Okay, so let's take a look at what this Sapphire stuff looks like. It looks like this, which is pretty darn good, I think. Uh, I've got this in two pens. Um, actually one because one of them ran out. Um, I ran it out in this Ixion, this Namisu Ixion. Uh, you can see I'm just chalk, chalk out of ink. I uh, ran this one dry. I really like it in this pen a lot. I think that the um, the generous flow from this pen gives you a lot of depth in this color and also the blue on the blue. I don't like to match stuff, but uh, this looks nice, so I'm not gonna I'm not, I ain't gonna complain. The other one that I have uh, is this uh, Sailor 1911. This is the standard in tangerine royal tangerine, uh, I believe it's called. This is a hard broad. And I think it looks pretty good in this one, too. It's um, not quite as dark. Let me zoom in just a little bit more. You can see there, it's not quite as dark as it is with the uh, the Ixion, but that's not a shock. It does have a little bit, um, it's a little bit drier uh, than the uh, the Ixion. I said here, fine, medium, I don't know, because, uh, darn it, this is a Bach nib in this Ixion, and those guys do not mark their nibs. That is uh, endlessly, un uh, endlessly frustrating to me. I don't understand why they can't just put a marking on the nib, but whatever. Um, so it's something in there, but it is definitely very wet and much wetter than this um, this hard broad And you can see the difference there in the two writing samples uh, The Ixion of course at the bottom you definitely get a good bit of sheen off of this ink when you put down enough of it um, It's got uh, a little bit of shading not all that much and it really de kind of depends on what um, uh, What paper and nib and all that kind of jazz this is an ink that definitely responds to the nib you put it in as you can see here, you don't get a ton of sheen, but you do get some, like just a tiny bit around the edges really is what you get. Um, and maybe you can't even see it. I, I don't know. There's not a ton. So if you hate sheen, don't worry about it. You're not going to be overwhelmed by this one. It definitely still looks blue. Uh, let's look at a couple of other papers right quick. Uh, I mentioned that the 20 pound performance is not is not perfect um, it does have a little bit of feathering and a little bit of bleed not tons but it does have some uh, and keep in mind that the uh, the Ixion went down uh, goes down very wet so that's where you see most of these little feathers uh, but that is a very wet nib so that'll do it you do get a little bit of it here maybe and here ish uh, from the the sailor as well but not all that much a little bit not much uh, and then on the back, you definitely get a little bit of bleed here from the Ixion. Remember, that's a very uh, wet nib. The Sailor at the top is uh, a bit drier, even though it's broad. That can, that's what counts as a broad in Sailor. Not very broad. Uh, but it does uh, have a couple of little spots of bleed. So not perfect on the 20 pound, uh, but what are you going to do? Uh, let's see. On better papers, this looks very nice. This is a currently inked uh, notebook from Inky Fingers. I don't know if you can still get these or not since uh, Matt Armstrong uh, stopped making them. Uh, but uh, you might be able to find some and you can see here. I think uh, that you get more a little bit of a little bit of sheen there on this one from the uh, from the Ixion and uh, Not really much over here at all. In fact, it actually looks a little bit pur more purple from the Ixion when you put enough uh, Enough of this sapphire on the page. You can see I've, re I've refilled this one quite a bit um, several actually <laughs> 220 315 and 512 uh, this one I just refilled on 512 and it's already gone. So, um, yep, I've gone through this one a few times and this one as well. In fact, I wonder, this might be the only ink that's ever been in this pen. <laughs> I don't remember actually. But anyway, it's close. So anyway, good ink and I like it. I'm glad I got 90 mils of it. 
Um, I, as I remember, I got it on a pretty good sale too. Uh, here it is on an ink journal, Tomoe River journal, and it's these two right here. And you've got Ocean Noir down at the bottom. I gotta gotta get more into that. I haven't really used that all that much, um, even though it's been in this pen for a while. It still flows perfectly. All right. Um, so here are the two uh, inks again, and well, the same ink in the two nibs, and again, darker from the Ixion, much lighter from the the Sailor. But that's just what you get when you have different uh, different flows. All right. Um, let's see, what else have I got this on? I've got some color inks or some ink samples we'll look at here in a bit. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, the water test right quick. Spray some water on this guy. Or I guess dribble it gently. I'm <laughs> using a different syringe. They all act a little bit different. All right, there we go. That's pretty solid. Just gonna let it kind of hang out there for a sec. And, uh, you know, work on the ink a bit. Well, that's probably about enough. Let's go ahead and mop it up. I'm going to try to just use one side of this so I can use this multiple times. I am stingy. And yeah, look at it go. It's kind of cool. Pretty cool. All right. And pretty decent water resistance, actually. I mean, definitely some of it came up in this nice little starburst pattern I've got here, but and that is all mopped up now. Uh, yeah, not much, uh, not much change, right? This actually does have some water resistance, which is nice. I didn't really see it coming. Here's the, here's the chromatography for this ink, uh, right here. As you can see, the chromatography doesn't, makes it look like there wouldn't be any water resistance at all. This, of course, is where it started, which is slightly darker, uh, and then all of it moved up the, the chromatography strip, I um, mean coffee filter that I use here, and uh, it seems uh, it seems like there was gonna be nothing, but sometimes this uh, gives you a different result, so that's why it's important to do both. All right, uh, let's look at some color comparisons, and then uh, that'll be it. Here is the Monteverde Sapphire. You can see I I like to make a notation for where I bought stuff or who I got a thing from. So this one I bought from Pin Chalet. Thank you very much, Pen Chalet, for, I don't know, running a sale where I could buy some ink. Here is the uh, Diamai Majestic Blue next to it. And then uh, over here, let's put uh, Private Reserve's Lake Placid. Lake Placid is one of the very few inks that I have run through multiple bottles of. I really like Lake Placid. Uh, it was probably my first ink, actually, in bottles. And uh, I've gone through several bottles of it. I really like it. Uh, but none of these are actually going to be super close to Monteverde Sapphire. This is a really nice color. Lake Placid looks kind of like it in these bits over here, uh, but it lacks the, the depth and sheen that Monteverde Sapphire has. And Majestic Blue um, didn't give me a whole lot of sheen here. Those of you who know this, this ink know that this one does sheen pretty hard, but I didn't get a lot here on this, um, this word card. I did get a little bit of, you can see a little color transfer, a little bit here as well. Um, I, I don't know if my fingers are a little bit wet at some point or what, but it doesn't seem to doesn't seem to smear now. So I think that was probably just transfer from the other cards around it. Uh, and then here are a couple of others. Uh, Private Reserve's Electric DC Blue, which is probably the closest, even though it has a ton of sheen. A ton of sheen. Too much sheen for some people, I think. Uh, that one I got an ink drop four years ago. T.S. Oh, <laughs> Tammy Sager. So uh, I haven't got to use Sailor's uh, Kobe number two yet, uh, but I do have a sample of it, and there is, of course, the Sapphire. Let me see if I have a, um, a sample of Skull and Roses, because that actually looks a little bit close. There's uh, Diamine Skull and Roses. And Skull and Roses actually looks pretty close to DC Electric Blue, if you get right down to it. Look at that, it's got the same sheen, kind of the same undercolor. That's an interesting thing to have happen. Uh, but it's definitely, I think, a bit darker than the Monteverde Sapphire. At least I think so. It's hard to tell underneath this layer of sheen. This is one of those um, super sheeny sorts of inks. Uh, and I think it looks cool, but you get a lot of um, uh, purpley red sheen that you don't get out of sapphire. So if you're a person that loves sheen, uh, go for, pardon me, Majestic Blue or Skull and Roses uh, might be a good idea for you. If you're a person that likes shading, etc., uh, this one is going to be a pretty solid blue, so not a ton of shading, not a ton of sheen, uh, but a little bit of each, um, so uh, everybody's happy, I think. All right, cool. So this has been uh, Monteverde's Sapphire from their Gemstone Collection with their ITF technology. What does ITF stand for? It stands for 
ink treatment formula european ink treatment formula so fancy all right um so anyway this is uh, an ink that i have found to be very nice in a couple of uh, very different pens uh it doesn't behave per perfectly on copy paper but not many things do uh it works great on everything else so check this one out at your favorite ink purveyor and i will see y'all later peace out